Can I ask a very sad question? Please do. Why don't I know any of these people? What I mean by that is, me even who's in the industry, if you name some names, at least I have, I have, I can picture faces. But as an avid, obsessed consumer of music, who should, who should have an understanding of all this music and have it at my fingertips, and it even be the foundation in which I started with music. Why was I then looking to Asha Raymond and boys? To, like, why doesn't, why don't, why, why do people come here and sit on this seat and when they're talking about music, they start with Tejo Sire? I've, I've, one of the reasons why I wanted you to talk for so long yeah, yeah, yeah. was because 99% of everybody who comes to sit here and they're talking about music, they all start from, yeah, and then when Kenyan music started, Ted Josiah, and I'm like, hold on. Uh, I've had it so many times. I'm like, why doesn't anybody ever say the mushrooms, safari sounds? <laughs> <laughs> A very good question. And I will be very blunt. I need it. <laughs> yeah, I'll be very blunt. Most of young musicians do not research. This information is out there, but they don't research. Ted Josiah did very well with the uh, Hudstone and all. And they thought, and this is not looking down upon yes. them. It's just because they didn't know. They thought they, they studied the rap culture, da, 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 da. If you go to our album recorded in uh, 19, I think, 80, 86 thereabout. No, 1994. Mm. We have a song titled Biwuru Wamiel. It's a Luo title. I wrote a song and then I asked somebody to translate it. It means, come, let's dance. On that song, our ex-guitarist, Dave Otieno, did a rap on that song. You know what they're doing now? Yes. We did it back then. There's another young man we produced in 1991, and he was rapping. And here's the thing. If you know traditional Maasai music, they rap. Maasai is, you know, they rap. So, cool. so what are you telling me when you tell me we started the rap culture? Mm. You just took a genre from America and I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic or anything. Yes. It's a fact. Mm. They should go back. I admire people like Akon, a Senegal, Senegalese, I think, in America, who went there and he looked back. He took lonely... Da, 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 da. And they, everybody thinks it's a new song. It's a song from, I think, the 50s or 80, uh, 30s. No way. Yeah. So go there. We have such rich music, either traditional or contemporary. Jisumbui Kidogo Wangalie, what the bands or the musicians before you 10, 20, 30 years ago did. Again, I'll ask the question. I agree that is one part. And then, sorry, before, before you go, mm. One thing, there's a gap between generation yetu and generation like na Ted Josiah and Anini. Mm. I respected as a producer. And the team he had, my good friend David Muridi, they worked hard to bring out such good music. But there's a gap, what happened? At the advent of FM stations, mm. that's where the rain started beating us. Prior to that, you could hear a lot, a lot of Kenyan music and probably East African music on VOK. Mm. And when your song was played on VOK, it was heard in the entire country and beyond. All right. FM stations come in, they had to had, have content for their programs. So this one takes 
rock music. I remember I won't mention the name. Started off with rock music. Da, da, da. So the FM station started exposing young musicians to foreign, a lot of foreign music that most of them did not, were not grounded or are not grounded in what we can call Kenyan music. Although even the Kenyan music of back then, Kinadaudi Kabaka and all, they were playing twist. What do you sasa to unapenda twist it? But mm. they sang in Kiswahili and gave it a Kenyan feel. Mm. All right. Taxi driver, these are these are all twists. The genre is twist. So these guys are doing the same, but going full scale, aping, and I'm not condemning all yes. of them, some of them, aping what the Americans are doing, what the, that is where we lost it somehow. Yes, we want commerciality of, of our music, but we can kidogo. And that's why Kofi and Avulia Sauti Sol. Surayako Muzuri Mama. You can call that Isikuti or Chakacha, mm. the genre. Eco grounded Nyumbani, and they took it to the world. <sighs> Man, you've, you've answered it, uh, especially in the second part. Um, the part of, of me as a youth when I then switch on my version of VUK, which is an FM station, uh, I was not hearing none of this. I didn't get to hear none of this. It was, it was non-existent to me. When I switched on uh, Jimmy Gathel's shows in the morning or, or the KTN shows, I wasn't seeing, uh, maybe there was a Cascas version that... that mm, but I wasn't seen, let me just say from my perspective, I wasn't seen. Uh, and therefore, I've not known that this, I've known that this music existed, but I'm also not been bothered to go back to the history and approach it and receive it. And can you, I, you, can you I, can tell me I was not can there. I, can You're I dive me? in again? Something just crossed my mind. Uh -huh. And uh, excuse me for mentioning now our neighbors, Tanzania. Everybody's Many people, not everybody, many people are freaking out for their music. They're singing in Kiswahili. What happened in Tanzania that we are not doing? Mm. During Nyerere's time, he insisted that musicians should record and sing in Kiswahili. He said it. Yeah. It was like a decree. Ooh. And now, Kina, I won't mention the current day artists have inherited that from bands like Didi Mizilimani Park, uh, Remy Ongala, and all these things. The whole country is doing songs in Kiswahili. They're so good in Kiswahili that they can sing, and they can write lyrics on any topic, at any sex, mm. but it will still sound right in front of people because of the mastery of the language. Mm. Come home, come on in Kiswahili, if they mention your backside, then mention the crude name of that mm. backside. Mm. And yet, Kuli Watasema Makalio. You've said the same thing, <laughs> but your, your lack of mastery of the language in Akusumbua, there was a phase before easy groups, groups in Itokea, Paka radio stations ikanza kuchuja sababu ya matusi. Mm. Sasa, those are some of the things ambazo zimetusumbua Kenya na wenzetu wanatupita. A song by a Tanzanian artist kama ima, inaimba mapenzi, a whole generation na nyingine zeza kukapa moja kusikiza. But a song kwa some of the groups, I'm not blanket uh, yes. condemning here, mm. some of the groups kwetu, Wataimba ile, they are singing for their peers, mtaani. Mm. Forgetting that e song, music is a business. You have to take it to the world. Mm. Not to the world. Yeah. So that you earn. Sasa ukimbia peers wako, eh, uyo nataka nifanya hivi, usiku nitafanya hivi. Kavu kabisa. Your peers that you're singing for don't have the buying power. And then what, what do you get at the end of the day?
So ni digress kidogo but that's something digress? that's something that bothers me very much. <laughs> you you're, you're answering a question and, and to summarize what you've said we rejected ourselves. That is extremely painful to know. Second extreme painful thing to know is that I was not the first gospel rapper. There was another Masai rapping before me. <laughs> do your homework. Do your homework. And do your homework, man. <laughs> I thought I was the first guy throwing it down with those p -p 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 Come on, there was another Masai who was just doing it. Okay, when we come back, and listen, let me let me also say this. You have the authority to say this. You know why? Because you talked to a group and you told them this same thing and they listened. And that group is Saudi Soul yeah. at their formation. And we're going to come back and have a conversation about that. But for now, let's take another break. <laughs>